everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Mariah and I talk about books and bookish things. If you're returning, thank you so much for coming back. Um, it's still not my usual filming location. I forgot to take my glasses off. Still not my usual filming location. Um, there's just too much going on in my life right now to worry about where I'm filming. This is my October TBRNium video, so if you're new to this channel, TBRNium is my monthly TBR game that I set up, and I'm very excited because I created a very special board for this um, month's TBR because it's Halloween, which is my favorite holiday. I'm very excited. Um, Harlow, my dog, says hello as well. Um, few quick admin notes before I go into the roles first and foremost I'm going to have to cut back to one video a week my work schedule just got extended um, I'm now working 10 hours a night instead of eight hours a night and it's just that on top of my capstone for my bachelor's degree means that I very rarely have time to film and I'm also having to cut back on Readathons and such. I'm gonna have to just focus on the books that I have. With that being said, with that being said, I think this will work out better and that I'll be able to create higher quality videos as things go on. So, here's to hoping for that. Let's get started with, let's get started with the rolls. Rule number one, random number generator on script. And that was 12 Nights at Rotter House. Uh, this is a haunted house thriller that I found on script and it looked really good. Um, I think it, it tells the story of this guy who's staying 12 nights at Rotter House and it's haunted. That's about all I know. Um, it is an award winner though. I just wish that it was. But that's available as an ebook and an audiobook on Scribd. And so I'm looking forward to diving into some spooky tales for October. My next role was serial a nonfiction book, and the prompt was serial killer. So I chose "I'll Be Gone in the Dark" by uh, Michelle McNamara. This is um, the book that led to the reopening of the Golden State Killer cases, that ended up with him being caught. So that should be really interesting, and I'm really looking forward that whole thing. Um. My next role was a recommendation and m my dear friend Talon over at um, a Talon Drag Moore Sunfeather Studios on Town Drakamore and Redbubble, Sunfeather Studios on Facebook and Instagram, and Talon Drakamore on Instagram. I'll leave all those links down below. Uh, she does amazing makeup looks and art, and I love her dearly. Chose her favorite book. Dreams Underfoot by Charles DeLint. I love this cover. 
I love this cover so much. This is a collection of short stories by Charles DeLint, all set in the town of Newford. And he writes urban fantasy novels. I read, uh, I read another one of his books last year and absolutely loved it. Um, so I'm really looking forward to reading these and um, I'm really happy that she chose this. I knew she was. I was like, oh, I'll just keep a couple options open, but I knew this was going to be the one she chose. My next role was Paranormal Horror, so I chose The Exorcist by William Beatty. I've started this audiobook a couple of times and I'm looking forward to reading it some more. If you don't know the story of The Exorcist, it tells the story of a demon who possesses a little girl by the name of Reagan, who's I think 11 or 12 in the book, and her mom is a movie star and is called in and she has to call in a priest to perform an exorcism on this little girl. That would be my cat Lilith. Um, I really look forward to getting into it. It's a long audiobook. We're talking like 14 hours, but I'm looking forward to it. Uh, trigger warnings for religion, for like vomit, and for really foul language. Like, really foul language. The cat is kneading my pillow. It's not like that was my pillow bought specifically for me or anything. But whatever. The next roll was the TBR jar. Let's see what we got. The Spirit Line. I pulled The Spirit Line by Amy and David Thurlow. This is when the special rug Crystal Mini Feathers is weaving for her uh, Kinalda, the traditional Navajo womanhood ceremony, is stolen from her loom, there are many suspects. Crystal is the most talented weaver on the res reservation, and many dealers are anxious to get their hands on her work. Crystal is also a maverick, known for her outspoken disdain for Navajo ways. Does one of her classmates hope to teach her a lesson, or is it something more serious? Henry, Crystal's best friend, who has embraced Navajo traditions and is setting to be a Hatali, a healer, believes the theft must be maybe a punishment for Crystal's failure to include the spirit line, the flaw that is a tribute to Spider-Woman, the important Navajo deity. For whatever the reason for the theft, Crystal has little time to discover the culprit, recover her rug, and prepare for the ceremony that means so much to her father. So, I'm really looking forward to reading this um, and diving into it. It's not very long. Um, I think it's it's only 216 pages, so probably a day or two's worth of a read. Um, I'm really hoping I enjoy this. The next role was a nonfiction book about ghosts, and I chose The Bell Witch, which is a story about a family who was tormented by the spirit of the Bell Witch. Um, the family was the Bells. Um, and it's made, been made into several movies now.
Next, I rolled a uh, random number generator on the Kindle. So I rolled um, Gin City by uh, Sadzi um, Hossein, who is a Bangladeshi author. Um, and this tells a story of a boy named Indelbed who lives in the city of uh, Dhaka in Bangladesh. Um, his father is an outcast in their clan, uh, the, can the Khan Rahman, Rahman? Rahman clan. And he all he refuses to let Indelbed go to school and all Indelbed knows is that uh, his mother died a death by Indelbed. But when his father falls into a coma, Indelbed is forced to try to figure out why and he finds out that his father is in fact a magician and was a trusted advisor, uh, ambassador, liaison to the, to the djinn and that he now has to deal with the djinn in order to save his father. Come to find out the djinn are very displeased and one of the consequences of that displeasure is that a hunt has been called with Indelbed as his prey and now Indelbed has to be on the run. I thought it sounded amazing. Um, it involves a lot of folklore and I'm really looking forward to diving into that. Next, I pulled Body Horror from the challenge cards. Um, I pull. I decided on the tr by Nick Cutter. Um, this tells the story of a troop of like Boy Scouts who are on their annual camping trip. I was never a scout. I don't know, but their annual camping trip, and as he's telling the ghost stories around the campfire. Um, somebody stumbles in and it looks like he's infected with something so now the boys have to survive the trip and fight off the infected so it's like a pandemic zombie outbreak book i guess um i've heard a lot i've heard of good things about it um so i guess we'll find out I never land on these spaces and they're always in every board. This is a my pick space. So these are original these are normally the purple cloud brain looking things, but they're pumpkins on this one or jack lanterns on this one. And I chose Bonecrier's Moon by Catherine Purdy. I've heard such good things about this. I've heard it's very angsty and full of a lot of melodrama and the book itself is just, it's gorgeous. Um, I feel it's just plain. Um, this is the Owl Crate edition, so it came with the exclusive cover, an author's letter, and signed. Um, it's a little bit hefty. Uh, it says, I'll just read from it so that I'm not trying to paraphrase. They alone, bone criers have a sacred duty. They alone can keep the dead from preying on the living, but their power to ferry the spirits of the dead into Goddess Alara's night heavens or Tyrus's underworld comes from sacrifice. The gods demand a promise of dedication at the cost of the bone criers' one true love. Elise has been prepared since birth to become the matriarch of the bone criers, but first she must complete her rite of passage and kill the boy she's also destined to love. Bastian's father was slain by a bone crier, and he's been seeking revenge ever since. But his vengeance comes too late. Elise's ritual has begun, and now their fates are entwined in life and in death. Sabine has never had the stomach for the bone crier's work, but when her best friend Elise is taken captive, Sabine will do whatever it takes to break the bond between Elise and Bastion before they all die. 
the first pulse-pounding novel in a new duology from the New York Times best-selling author of Burning Glass shines with doomed romance, mac macabre magic, and a betrayal with the power to shatter the boundary between the living and the dead. This is the signature page. It sounds spooky and witchy and full of angst. And I'm really looking forward to reading it because I've been in the mood for spooky and witchy and full of angst. <laughs> Uh, next, I pulled witch the uh, nonfiction about witches. So I chose *The Witches* by Stacey Schiff. This is about um, Salem in 1692. For those international viewers, 1692 in the um, in the New England colonies, specifically the Massachusetts Bay Colony, um, in the village of Salem, a witch hunt broke out. It ended up with um, the deaths of several women and one man and it was neighbors turning against neighbors children turning against their parents um anybody anybody and everybody was accused of being a witch and in massachusetts at the time the penalty for that was hanging um one man was killed by being crushed to death by stones because he refused to confess to being a witch or give the names of other witches I already know quite a bit about the Salem Witch Trials, but I'm really looking forward to reading this. Um, I've heard that this is a great exploration of it. It can be a little, um, I've heard it can be a little dry though, so I might try to um, break it up a little bit, but it's still very, very excited, although it's also a hefty book. Psychological Horror by Stephen Graham Jones, The Ones That Got Away. Um, the, this is a collection of short stories. I don't want to go into knowing it a whole lot about it because I read his new book, um, The Only Good Indians, and it blew my freaking mind. So I really want to go into more of his work knowing just as little as I knew about The Only Good Indians so that I can really get the full like horror and deep messages and everything and I'm really hoping that it comes through and delivers some more because that was probably one of my top books of the year like hands down top books of the year so short story collection by Stephen Graham Jones that's all I need to know <laughs> Finally, one last TBR jar pick. This is gonna be great. And I pulled Behold the Mighty Dinosaur, edited by David, David Jablonski which is a short story collection about dinosaurs. This is either going to be amazing or it's going to suck. Um, authors in here include Ray Bradbury, John Updike, um, and a number of other distinguished stories. Um, I think it's 256 pages. It's not very long. Um, 
it's only like seven or so short stories. I tend to breeze through one or profit introduction, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten chapters total. Um, I tend to breeze three through short story collections, so I'm really looking forward to reading two this month. Three this month? Three this month. I'm really looking forward to like kind of diversifying with that. Um, two are by one author and one is by multiple authors, so this should be really fun. I'm really looking forward. Dinosaurs are one of my favorite things on the planet. I love dinosaurs. When I'm stressed out, I will watch dinosaur documentaries, which means I'm watching them a lot lately. And that wraps up this month's TBR. We got a good mix of short story collections, thick, uh, thick nonfiction, popular nonfiction. We've got a lot of audiobooks, which is good because that was a struggle this month, especially with class and work um, and my work schedule changing. Um, I need short stories. I am drinking out of my Life is Always About Plan B mug and on the back it says Plan B. Plan A is always my first choice. You know, the one where everything works out happily ever after. But more often than not, I find myself dealing with the upside down, inside out version where nothing goes as it should. It's at this point the real test of my character comes in. Do I sink or do I swim? Do I wallow in self pity? Do I wallow in self pity and play the victim, or do I shift gears and make the best of the situation? The choice is mine. After all, life is all about how you handle Plan B. Uh, Susie, and it's copyrighted by Susie Toronto. My grandmother got me this mug, and it's still one of my favorite. Um, and I'm just drinking uh, Starbucks brand Sumatra Blend coffee um, while I wait for my order from Bones Coffee to come in. I'm very excited about that. So that wraps up this week's video. I'm sorry that I look like hell and that we're not at my usual spot, but I needed to get this video up and I didn't want it to be a super weird um, thing. So with that in mind, I hope you guys have a great rest of your week and into the weekend. Um, I hope that October, that September brought you nothing but bookish bliss. And if it didn't, I hope that October fills all your spooky delight.